Symphony Essentials. For Native Instruments, contact. And in this video, we're going to go over the strings, the brass, and the woodwinds. There's also a percussion element available, but the strings, the brass, and the woodwinds all come whenever you purchase Complete Ultimate. We're going to focus on the string ensemble because this interface is pretty much the same thing for the brass and the woodwinds. We will go through the other two uh, towards the end there. In this video, we're going to take an in-depth look so you'll learn everything that's in the manual. Of course, this is better than the manual because you'll actually see and hear what our changes do. We'll go through our articulations, the different types here, our different options down here, and so much more. So let's start our deep dive into Symphony Essentials. Here we are in Contact. Now I have Contact loaded in Pro Tools. You could run Contact standalone or in pretty much any DAW out there. And we have the String Ensemble here. This is the one we have loaded. We have the String Ensemble Essentials. That's a combination of our separate instruments here. We can play all of them in one ensemble, although with a limited set of articulations. Same thing for our brass ensemble. You can see different instruments. There's a brass solo. We have a quartet there. Okay. Woodwinds, the ensemble. We have the full ensemble down here or the individual instruments right here. And of course, same thing for the woodwind solo. Here's a quintet. Here's the individual instruments. So you could load up, as we already have, the ensemble here for our strings, and you could quickly sketch something out. Then if you wanted to, you could replace it with individual instruments later on if you happen to need that. But we're going to focus on the string ensemble essentials. Now one note, I don't know why they call this symphony essentials. This is a reduced set of the full symphony series. However, the symphony essentials, the name essentials implies that this is not very good, you know? But as you heard in the beginning there, it sounds great. They could have called this symphony series and they could have called the other series the symphony pro series, but nonetheless, this is the symphony essentials. So we have strings ensemble essential loaded right here in contact. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. Starting on the front page here on the articulations tab. First up, we have this big knob, the dynamics knob and in contact, always look down here in this gray area. If you ever want to know what a parameter does. So this is our dynamics knob. This is controlled with our mod wheel, of course, on our actual keyboard or in here or of course, in your DAW, you can, of course, draw in automation. So what this does, by playing that in or automating it later on, you can get more realism out of your string part. Down here, we have expression, which controls the overall volume. Pull it way down. Don't hear anything, right? Pull it up, hold down the key. You can modulate that as well. And it's a good idea to modulate the expression, the attack, the release and the brightness. Just, you know, just a little bit again for more, for more realism. You can of course, right click this. I could say, learn the MIDI CC automation. I could twist a controller or a fader, whatever you want on your keyboard. And of course I could play that in live. going to control click here on Windows to set that back to 100 command click on Mac. Now the options you see down here will vary between uh, the different interfaces. We'll get to those later on, but you'll learn pretty much everything you need to know just by learning the strings. Then we have the attack. So with the attack set all the way down, of course, there's still a little bit of a fade in just because of the nature of strings or brass or even woodwinds, but we can increase that attack. So it's going to fade in even slower. That's obviously too much, but you can modulate this control for a little more realism, just again, because of the nature of strings. All right, then the release, pretty self-explanatory. They pull it way down. It goes right off. 
just a little bit of a fade out. Pull it up to 100%. Then we get the natural release time. Much quicker on the release there. Again, just adjust that, maybe modulate it a little bit. Then we have brightness. Again, another self-explanatory control. Darker. Brighter. Now this can get very harsh with violins. But again, modulate that control for more, for more realism. Again, control click here on Windows, command click on Mac, center that out. So that's the top section here of our main page. Then down here, we have our articulations, our sustain, and different options, depending on what articulation that we have selected. So right now we're on sustains. We can see that key switch is F6. If I go up here, you can see this up here in the red keys in this case. So I switch those. Of course, you could do that on your physical keyboard as well. My keyboard isn't long enough. I'd have to change the octave to actually switch that. But obviously, you could also switch this in your DAW just by programming those notes in to change your articulations. These green keys are for shorter articulations. Spiccato, here's staccato, and pizzicato. So let's go through these here. We can also click in here to change our articulations. Let me move my keyboard back down about there. So sustain, you've already heard. Switch it up. Here's tremolo. We have trills. And over here we have a new option. We can set this to the key. And over here, we can change the, the type there. So we can conform it with major, minor, do half, whole. Okay. So just set that to whatever scale you want up to the harmonics. In a new control, our release length, pull it way down. Or way up. Still continuing on, I'm not even holding down a note. Let's go to our shorter articulations. We have staccato here. And right here, you'll see round robin. We'll play the same note. You can see it's choosing different samples in a continuous fashion. So if I start on one, goes through our four samples, we could choose random as well. Now it's choosing a random sample, but it will not play the same one twice. This of course adds to the realism. Put it back on continuous there. Then we have our slam control. This is going to control the amount of compression. So basically think of it as a make it louder knob. Let's slam it here. Then we have repetition. This is where things start to get pretty cool. Just click that little dot. I'm gonna hold down one note. Now it's giving me repetition in one eighth. Drop down up to sixteenth. back on one eighth, then we have an accent here and you can see sort of the waveform. So with no accents, pretty straight, we can go accent one and three, getting those accents on one and three, a stronger accent for one and three.
and of course, Accent on One. Now keep in mind, our time signature here is one eighth, but we're on 120 here in Pro Tools. If I change this to say 90, of course, one eighth of that is going to be slower. So that is synced to our, to our host tempo. We could go to 220, right? Put this on one and three. So just keep that in mind as as well. If you want those faster or slower, you know, one thing that's pretty cool is as we're switching through these either in here on the interface or with our keyboard, our actual keyboard, or of course coming into our DAW and programming in these notes, and we can see the notes they are. So B7 here, this here is F6. Also, if you highlight a note, you can see it says sustain. This is tremolo, harmonics, so on and so forth. You can also highlight these keys here and down in that gray area, we can see this is our basses, our cellos, violas, and violins, okay? So one thing that's pretty cool is as we switch these, say staccato, it remembered my repetition, but I switch over here to spiccato, I still have the same repetition control, but it's not turned on, okay? So we can have different settings per articulation. We still have the same round robin option here. Random or continuous, you can slam that a little more. And repetition, same thing here. Turn this down a bit. Change the accent, hold down two notes in this case. So same stuff here. Then on to our pizzicato. This is sort of a plucked sound. We don't have a choice of round robin in this case, but it will cycle there. Same slam control. That can be independent from our other articulations with a slam control. I can have this one here up higher. This one is down lower. And this one is right there. If you ever watch classic cartoons, you've heard a lot of pizzicato. If you think of things like, you know, Looney Tunes and whatnot. Right? Same stuff here. Repetition. Change our accent here. So that's the bottom section. Now, if you want to key switch this, obviously use the keys up here by pressing in contact, select the lights here. You can also, of course, program this into your DAW and keep in mind what the notes are. Okay, this is going to vary between either how you set it up here in our articulations tab or the default state in some of these other instruments. If I wanted to program changes in our DAW, of course, I would come up to the correct note. If I want sustain, it's on F6. We'll come up to F6 here in Pro Tools, in this case, which is right here. I could draw a line in or just one note. It will stay static, okay? So as long as that's there, I don't need to draw this out, you know, the entire length. You can if you want to, but I can just put that there. I can do a different articulation here, different articulation say up here, and it's changing down here, as you can see, maybe a different one right there, okay? So of course, if I play that back, you're gonna see those articulations change. There's tremolo, there's our harmonics. Now, if I actually put a note in down here somewhere. Just draw in a long note, just one note, whenever we play this back, it's actually not going to switch what you're hearing.
right? We'd have to play a new note, and then we would get that new articulation, all right? So keep that in mind as well. So if up here, and then we switch somewhere around here. So let me come back down here, and we'll do a new note. Say, say there, a new note over here, for example. And then you'll actually get those changes. It's harmonics, there's no note there. And because we had repetition on, that's why it wasn't just one quick spiccato uh, note. And there we go. Even if that line is long, as it is down here, that note, because it's on spiccato, we're just getting the one, the one hit. Okay? So just keep that in mind with your triggers. They don't have to be these long lines. They can be if you want. If that helps you compose and visually see, you know, what section is what, you can do that, but they don't necessarily have to be. Now let's look even deeper at our articulations. One thing you can do to change your articulations in whatever slot they're in. So if I don't want this Sordino in this slot, I can actually click the name here and I can change it. So if I want that to be sustain here as well, I can click that. Now I have sustain here and sustain there. So just click the name and choose the articulation. It's a really quick way to change your articulations, okay? Click the name. We can also unload any articulations that we don't want. So I could remove that one. You can see the impact on my computer then goes down. They recommend that you remove any articulations that you don't need just for better performance. So it's on none. Let's put that back to staccato. Okay, now we'll head in here and click the articulations, the word, that opens up our articulation slot tab. And we can switch articulations in here as well. If I click on sustains, I can click it again, and I can choose maybe trills. So now I have trills up here and trills down here. Same thing here, click it, click it again. Maybe put this on trills as well. We have these three dots here. Let's click that. We can empty all the slots, all the none. Let's go ahead and add some articulations now. Click the edit tab here. Now we can choose our articulation slot setup. You can also just click in here and assign them if you wanted to. Okay, but down here we want staccato, so I can just click on staccato. There it is loaded up. Come down here to none again and throw in whatever you want. Now up here, again, we have this volume knob so we can adjust the level of that, of that articulation. Okay, so if I pull this one down and we play our sustains much lower, switch over here to a different articulation. So you can use this control to balance out your different articulations, okay? Here we can control click to put that to the defaults. Command click on Mac, all right? So if your harmonics are too loud or the tremolo is too loud, whatever, you can adjust that in here, all right? And of course, again, just select whatever you want for that slot. Put that back on staccato. Now, we also have an option down here for the key. So right now our key switches are on F6 up to C7, and they are way up here on the keyboard. If I wanted this key here for our sustain to be a different key, I can do that. I can just click and drag in here and choose any key I want. So if I want that to be, I could put it down on C0 or C minus, whatever I want, but let's just put it up here for now. Drop it right there. Okay, so now you can see this new key switch up here instead of being down here. I can do that for all of these. I could also, if I wanted to, use MIDI Learn. So select that, and I'll press any key I want. Click that key there. So now I placed it way down here on B4 because that's the key I clicked. I could do the same thing. Select that, click a key in here, like literally in the contact interface. And that'll switch it as well. Now it doesn't make much sense to have it down here, does it? Because that's right in our, in our playable area. Let's move this. What do you say we actually take this way down? to say C minus two. So now it's going to be way down here. Now what if I want these articulations here? 
to just go up the scale. Okay, so I want this one to be C sharp. I could of course come in here and try to adjust things, but an easier way, so we have macros already assigned here. Just select my first slot. It's C minus two, I've already set that up manually. Hit our three dots here, and we can go to set ascending keys from first slot. Select that, boom. Everything is now set up right down here in the C minus two octave. Okay, as you can see the note that they are assigned to. We can switch with our uh, lower octave now. You can also come in here and reset all start conditions. And that's gonna put everything on C0, which I don't think I want that here because <laughs> we're, we're getting into that area. So let me go ahead and put this back. Let me select this one first, put this on F6. Then click our three dots and set ascending keys from first slot. And then we're back to having them up here, okay? Now a lot of the other instruments will be assigned to C0. It just sort of depends on which one you load up. Okay, now velocity range. So we can have different articulations on one key switch. So if I'm running out of keys, or I don't wanna press a bunch of different keys, if I want my sustains and say trills and maybe a spiccato or something all on the same key, I can do that. So if we want all of those on F6, I could put sustains at a velocity range of one to, I don't know, let's say 57. So whenever I press a key between the velocity ranges of one to 57, and I'm on the sustain articulation, it will play a sustain. So here on trills, what if I put that on F6? There we go, I can do that. Now let's change our velocity range to something outside of what we set here. So again, this one here is up to 57. This is going to be 58 to, we'll say 61. Actually, let's widen that a bit to 94. Then we could do maybe a staccato. Change this to F6 right there and change this to something above 95. There we go. And we'll just take that up to uh, 127. So now we have three different articulations mapped to one articulation key, F6, okay? So as you can see, again, F6, one to 57 is the velocity. Trills, F6, 58 to 95 is the velocity. And we did staccato, 96 to 127. All right. So now, if I play a key on my keyboard, I'm getting a trill in that case. I press it really hard, I'm getting that staccato. Now let me go up here to staccato. Let me take repetition off, okay? Come back here to sustain. If I press softly, getting sustains. Press a little harder. Get my trill, and really hard. Staccato. And that's with the F6. Selected, okay? If I select something else, obviously. It's just that articulation. So select the proper key switch there. It could be any of these here, because they're all F6. I did that all on one key. Now what I mean by one key is one of our playable keys here, not the key switch. It doesn't matter how hard you hit the key switch, okay? Once you choose a key switch, it's selected. It doesn't matter how hard you hit it. So as you know in contact, or as you should know, the keyboard in here, this clickable keyboard with our mouse, is velocity sensitive. If I come way up here, this is a softer velocity. And that's our sustain. So if I come down a bit more, that's, of course, a, a higher velocity. So somewhere in here, that's our trills. That's staccato. Up here is sustain. All right, so if you wanna stack your keys like that with your velocity range, you can do that as well. You also have this clear slot, which is pretty self-explanatory, right? Okay, put that back there. And then we could come back in here again and set the ascending. You also have this distribute velocity range equally on active slots, okay? So if I select that, let me select this here, grab this and select that, so now, we can see the different velocity ranges down there that are distributed equally 
to all of those slots. So we're on the F sharp six. If I play way up here, we have to be between 16 and 30. If I come way down here, nothing, right? Now you could also, let me say, uh, set ascending from the first slot there again. What I could do is I could change all of these, if I wanted to again, to say F6. So now we have F6 for everything, and the velocities are all set to 127. Come back in here and distribute velocity range equally on all active slots. Select that. So now everything is equal, and I don't have to actually go in there and change my velocity ranges, okay? So depending on how hard I hit the key, it's going to give me a different articulation. Now, obviously, setting all of your articulations when you have this many to one key, uh, not a good idea, right? But you can make use of that velocity range either when playing in with your actual keyboard, or of course, if you're programming in your DAW, just grab a note, throw something in there, and then adjust the velocity to trigger the appropriate articulation. All right? Just so we're clear on that. So this whole time we have been on the key selection. You can also do things by MIDI CC if you prefer. You can choose the number here. So I could select this again and change something on my controller and have that mapped. So then I can go through my different articulations. I'm just using a rotary knob in this case. You can do your key switches that way if you prefer. You also have your different MIDI CC numbers here now. As you see, on our controller range, 46 to 60, 61 to 75. You can set this up, you know, the same way. So reset all start conditions, distribute controller equally on active slots. You can do that as well. If you prefer to use MIDI CC or you want to send, you know, MIDI CC messages from your DAW, but I like, uh, I like key most of the time there. And I think most people are probably going to use key unless you really need to use the MIDI CC, but be aware that option is indeed in there. Back to key. So that way I can switch my articulations with my keys instead of MIDI CC. Now let's move on to the effects tab here. So we have, in this case, an EQ, a reverb, and compression. To turn them on, there's these tiny little dots. Just click that. Whenever they light up, that means they're on. So simple stuff here, EQ. Let me actually switch my articulation there. So we have a low, a mid, and a high section. Of course, choose your frequency here for those who don't understand what that means. Same thing as this. So our frequency will be controlled here. Let me actually boost it up a bit. Find the frequency you want, and then you boost it or cut it with your gain knob. Now in this mid section, we have our bandwidth control, and that would be this. So tighter or wider. How many frequencies do you want? to actually impact with your boost or your cut. All right, so simple stuff here. If I want more low end, come down here to say 135, boost the gain, or cut it. Just sweeping through the bands there, the, the hertz. Control click, put that back to zero. Same thing for the mid-band. Cut or boost. The frequency, so somewhere in the middle, I guess. Cut some out. Make it wide or tight. And then, of course, same thing for the high end. All right? Just adjust that however you need to. Then reverb, which is already on. We have a bunch of different types of reverb. So we can go to the chambers. Then down here, we have different types of that. So long, here's short. Control the size. 
make it really large. You pull the amount up a bit. It's a short reverb. Pull it way down, of course. All right. Change this back to, we'll say cinematic, but we have hallways, here's underground, outdoor, and even effects, like a drain, iron. Use these arrows here as well to switch through. I've released the note. It's still going on because it's a long effect, a clapping effect. Change that, change that. Do a wall. It's kind of a cool one. Okay, so come through here, go through these. There's a lot of good stuff in here. Go back to cinematic. We're on modern film right now. And same thing applies our size. The delay is basically a pre-delay. So do you want that initial, that initial hit, that initial attack to come through with reverb on it pretty quick? Or do you want that initial attack to say come in, right? And then be affected with the reverb. So it almost blooms a little bit. Turn the mix amount up. Or of course, down to zero. Pull it way up. You turn my mix down a bit first. And then it comes in. That's obviously too much, but you can hear that blooming effect. Somewhere around there is good for this here. Then we have a filter. Now what this is for is not for the actual sounds, the string sounds in this case. This is for the actual reverb. So a high pass and a low pass. Now a high pass and a low pass, let me turn this off, turn this on, turn this on here. So a high pass, which is down here, cuts out the lows. So everything on this side, would be affected, this would be, you know, cut out. Opposite for the low pass, of course. So we're cutting that out and we're shaping, in this case, just the reverb. So if we don't want the reverb on the bottom end, because maybe it's too boomy, too muddy, we could use that filter and dial that out. So we'll look at that. Let's pull the mix amount up. Could shape that, cut out the low end of that reverb. So we still hear the reverb on the top end, but not on that bottom end. Same thing for the low pass. We could make it so it's just that middle area getting affected, say around there. maybe just the low end. Let me pull this up a bit. That's too low, of course. So say to one or 250-ish or so. And of course, mix in the amount of reverb here. So it's just on the low end in this case. All right, so use that to shape your reverb. Then we have compression and turn the EQ off and the reverb off if we want. So compression will help to level out everything else. It pulls up lower sounds and sort of caps off uh, more transients. So we're reducing the overall dynamic range. Just set that whatever you want. So four to one. When do we want it to attack quick or later on really hit that transient or let it come through and then compress it release and then the overall gain for that. Let me turn on the reverb again. Make sure I mix it down a bit. Okay. So we'll change the threshold. About there. It's a ratio. How much. Tech it quick. Tech it slower. So 
So in that case, those transients came through a little bit more. Then the release of that effect, really quick, or hold it longer. Up here is auto, and just turn it about there. Or turn it off. Back on. Pull the threshold down even more. And then the gain to compensate for our changes here. Make it louder if we want. For the fast release, that's way too fast. And that attack is way too long. So that is obviously way too much. We're really <laughs> compressing that sound. It doesn't sound natural at all. Let's turn that off. All right, but use that. Don't go too crazy with it like, like we did here, but use that to sort of tame the overall peaks and sort of bring up some of those lower level sounds. Overall, we're compressing the sound and reducing the overall dynamic range with the compression. All right, so now that we've seen everything in the string ensemble, you pretty much know how everything works. So for the rest of this, I'm just going to go through some of these other instruments and we'll see some, you know, a little different uh, uh, changes in the interface here. Let's get rid of the string ensemble. I'll just grab just the bases here from the string ensemble. You can see everything is pretty much the same here. Articulations, our dynamics control, expression, attack, release, all the same. Right, come through here. But of course, this is just the bass. Key switches. Slam it. We still have things like repetition. Of course, our effects. Turn that down a bit. Then we have our cellos, our violas, and our violins one and two. We'll look at this one here. Then we'll move on to the uh, brass because this is going to be pretty much the same thing. Of course, we can still come in here to our articulations tab and do all of the same stuff that we already saw uh, with the full ensemble. All right. Same stuff. Same effects in here. move on to the brass now. We'll just go with the ensemble. We'll grab the full ensemble. So we can play the horns, the trombone, the trumpets, and the tubas. We have another tab down here called ensemble. But all of this stuff is the same. So articulations, same stuff. Come down here, click a name, change out the articulation. We have different articulations here for our brass though. Edit, you can see some different things in here. All right. Of course, our colored keys down here, trombones, tubas, horns, and trumpets. You turn up the dynamics a bit. Key switches down here, in this case. 
Again, you can always set all of this up however you want. Same stuff in here. We switch. Now in here, our round robin, we don't have the uh, control. But we do have repetition. This is a little bit different. So I hold on a note, hold it down to here so you can see it. Plays twice because of the attack, the speed, and the accent. So I want the attack to be four. Plays four times. So play one note, get four. I held down two keys in that case, all right? If I go to run, let's hold down one key. As long as I have it held down, it will just keep running. Of course, the speed adjustment here. Which, of course, is connected to the BPM that we have in our DAW or in, in contact here. And if you're running it in standalone, then we have accents, none, the first or the last. Go to three times here, right? Or the first. All right, so that's how that works. A little bit different, but basically the uh, same thing. Go in here to our decrescendo. Also have repetition on this. Now we have it on two times. You heard that attack hit twice. Okay. Control the speed here. See this progress bar. It hits twice. Do it three times if we want. And control the speed of that right here. And just like the previous instrument, whatever we change here doesn't affect our other articulations. So repetition could be off here and can still be on there. Now, in this case, between these two blue articulations, our repetition setting is being remembered. OK, so just keep that in mind as well. Let me turn it off here. But we have the same controls. So two times, three times, of course, the uh, speed. Next one here is the crescendo. Again, if it's on between these blue articulations, it's being remembered over here to the green, or the red, it's not. To the crescendo, we can see sort of what that does. It's gonna fade in. And repetition is on there, so you heard that attack twice. Swell. Again, it's remembering our repetition. Hits it twice. It's a blast. It drops off. And staccato. Velocity. Soft. Hard. Right? Of course, our repetition. Three times. Do a run. Accent the first or the last, go to last, put it on four. And that's our articulations here in our brass ensemble. Again, come in here and switch out things or switch in things that you want. Now we also have a little bit of a different interface here. Now we have the attack. Let me put this back on. Uh, sustain we have a few different things here as well on sustain but let's look at the attack first so of course attack is the same thing pull it way up gonna fade in a bit more than it naturally already does All right pull it back down release is the same thing Cuts off that way. Tightness now. So this is going to be the start position of the sample. If I pull it up here, it's not gonna sound good. It just comes right on. 
But of course, because of the nature of something like brass, it takes you know a little bit, like a fraction of a second, just sort of depends on once that initial blow comes through, of course, right? So you can use the tightness in conjunction with the attack. So I pull it all the way up again. Not good, let's put some attack on that. A little bit better. So you get the idea of that. You can, again, modulate these controls, maybe pull it in a bit, and then use your attack here. If there's some passages where you really need it to hit. In just the right area. All right. We have motion. This will basically add vibrato. To the sound there. Versus none. Put it back on. Trumpets. Okay, so that's your motion that you can again modulate that or right click it and you can learn that to your MIDI CC uh, automation for your board. Now on the sustain here, we have legato. So that's going to just play here. Put legato on, change that response time. Now legato means basically overlapping notes, okay? The response time of that. You hear how it sort of fades a little differently here. Now, right now we have it on solo. Put that on duet. Back on solo. Then we have flip or slur, which switches between precise note changes, which is flip, and notes connected by a continuous pitch change, which is slur. So on flip, go to slur. Hear the difference? Oh, slur is up. Versus flip. And then, of course, we have the repetition here as well. But we've already seen that attack phase here three times. Turn off legato. Okay, so let me turn off repetition, head down to the ensemble page now, which we have in this instrument. So we can see our tubas, our trombones, our horns, and our trumpets. We can turn them off. I want to turn off the uh, tubas, and of course reduces the memory taken up. Turn them back on. As such, adjust the panning of that. Let's go to the trombones here and pull them way over to this side. 
Maybe you want the horns on the other side. All right, control click, center that out. So just control the panning up here, pretty obvious. Then the overall level. So if the low end is too much, you can pull that down here. Maybe more trombone, less horns, less trumpet. You get the idea. Just level everything out. Control click those. And down here we can see, and also down here, A0 to C2 is going to be our tubas. Up here's our trombones. C sharp 2 to uh, F sharp 3, so on and so forth. We can see that down here are these lines there. But you can change this however you want. So right now these are linked. You can unlink them just by clicking. Right now, if I just click and drag here on C2, I'm pushing my tubas up higher. Okay, expanding the range. And in this case, because they're linked, I'm decreasing the starting note of our trombones. So now I can have tubas way up here. Onto the trombones there. That's with it linked. Pull it back down. Maybe I want them way down here. And then right into the trombones. All right. Control click that, control click that. That's with it linked. You can of course unlink. Now, if I want my tubas and trombones to overlap, I can just increase the range here of my tubas. And now you can see down here with our red line that we're overlapping the trombones. So we're actually playing tubas and trombones at the same time here. Turn the tuba off. Back on. Okay, so that's how you can do that. Again, control click, command click on Mac, put things back to how they were. Of course, do that for your horns and trumpets as well. Then the effects page, pretty much the same thing. EQ is the same, okay? Reverb, essentially the uh, same thing here, essentially. Different EQ types here, of course. Other types within the cathedral category. Same controls here as well. Now we have compression, but now we also have a filter. A little bit different. Basically the same thing, but a little different. Turn on the compression, turn on the filter. They're on the same page here. So we already know about the compressor. We don't have a gain knob in this case though. Let's turn the filter on now. Boom. So now we can set the cutoff point here. The point at which the signal is attenuated. I want it way down here. or up high. Then we can resonate that. Right around that cutoff frequency. Or turn it off. Okay. So that's your compressor and filter in this case. Turn them on and off with our little dots. We already know about all of that. Sounds great, especially for an essentials, you know, quote, essentials library. So that's some of the differences in the brass. Let's go and get rid of that too. Now we'll look at just say a single instrument, maybe just say the horns. Pull those in to see the differences in this interface as well. Pretty much the same thing as we saw in the ensemble there. But of course, now we have just the horns. much fuller range. So I don't need to go through this because it's, you know, the same thing. Articulations, 
pretty much the uh, same stuff in here. You see sustains now, staccato. Switch through these, set up everything however you want it. All of this stuff we saw in the strings still applies as far as our uh, macros go as well. Okay. It's a single tongue. Same stuff for our legato here. That on duet and slur it. Repetition on that. For the attack, of course. Our repetition is staying on for all of our red, go to green, and now it's off. Staccato. Already know about that, right? Different articulation that we haven't seen yet. It's with our stop mute. All right. A swell, and it's a blast. And on these, I can just hit the key. It's going to play that articulation. I don't have to hold it down in that case. All right. So there's a few different articulations in there as well. That's our horns. Maybe grab the tubas. And again, basically all the same stuff in here. Different articulations. The blast, swell fast, long blast, or sustain all. Same stuff here, slur. Let me take off legato here. Repetition, same stuff. Put it at four. Okay. Now we'll move on to say brass solo real quick here. Just a quartet. So down here we have our trombones, horns, and the trumpets. Over here's the tubas. Of course, our different articulations, pretty much the same thing. Again, we have the ensemble in this case. We already saw what this does, so I'm not gonna go through it again. Effects, same stuff in here. Filter with the compressor reverb and EQ attack release and tightness. But in this case, we have vibrato instead of motion. Different kinds of sustain here. Sustain P, sustain F. So a bunch of different articulations that you can go through. You don't need to hear them all because you can always just come in here and set up whatever you want. Same stuff applies here that we already saw with the key, the MIDI CC, our macros, all that good stuff, all right? So again, the ensemble page, the effects page, basically the same, different control, just call the vibrato instead of motion here, all right? So that's our brass solo. Of course, there's different instruments here. This is the essential, the quartet essential. We can do just a single one, say so just the trumpets. And again, basically the same stuff, Again, it says vibrato here. Just a solo trumpet instead of an ensemble of uh, trumpets. A little bit different down here. 
solo and duet is right here and we don't have the uh we don't have the flip or slur control there try to play a chord here with legato on duet get a little more range there Turn that off. Again, you have repetition, different kinds of sustain here. Of course, you could use Legato with that if you want. On solo, it ends up ending that chord. All right, and then of course repetition, all that stuff we've already seen. Repetition times three. Of course, all of this stuff is the same in here. So it's a solo instrument there, just the trumpets in that case. So now we'll go ahead and move on to the woodwinds. First, we'll just grab the ensemble. Then we'll look at the individual. So again, pretty much the same thing, a little bit different. So our tack, release, tightness, motion, we already know what that does. Our colored keys down here, we already know. We can highlight those. Bassoons here, brass winds, clarinets and flutes. Up here. All right. Of course, our key switches. Again, click in here if you want to change those around. Here we have an arpeggio. Just holding down one key in this case. Change the type to, say, a minor. And just holding down one key. And keep in mind that speed is, again, connected to our BPM up here as well. So if it was, uh, say, 90, it will, of course, be slower. We also have our speed in here. We can change this to, say, eighth. Put this back on 120. There we go. Change the mode to just up. Up, down, down, up. Put this back on, let's say, 32nd. Pretty quick there. 16th. And say up, down. Now we have our count. So right now it's on run. We can say three times. Just hold down one note. That's just three. Seven. It's two notes. Doesn't sound good in this case, but uh, you can do that if you want. And then back to run. Just hold down your key. And you've got a quick arpeggio right there. Same stuff for our articulations here. Come in here and choose whatever you want. Set up your key splits with maybe velocity or something. And of course, MIDI CC. Same stuff in here. Just, of course, the volume of each of these, as we've already saw. And of course, click the name here if you want to switch out an articulation. Check out some of these here. Staccato. 
Now here we have a velocity sense. So this switches the dynamic attenuation control between the dynamics knob and the actual velocity. Pull it way up. You can see that in here. With it on now, turn velocity sense off. It's gonna be a bit louder. We still have velocity. It just attenuates it a little bit differently. Same stuff, arpeggio, and this can get pretty cool now. I'm just holding down one key, same stuff here. Major, minor, augmented, here's diminished. We even have trill. Now we have an interval. So say a minor sixth. Just holding down one key. An augmented fourth, let's slow that down a bit. Change the mode to up to down. Go to a perfect fifth. And one thing to keep in mind, if you're programming this in your DAW, you're not going to get the arpeggio spit out in MIDI, right? It's just gonna be one note, all right? And by that, I mean this. If I draw in here, too high, let's come down here. So that will be just one note. Okay, just keep that in mind. There are things out there like Scalar, uh, which of course would spit out a full arpeggio, but of course in that case you wouldn't want arpeggio on uh, in here. All right, just be aware. Just be aware of that. It's not spitting out the actual MIDI in the arpeggio. It's just triggering the arpeggio within this woodwinds ensemble. All right, so you have different, a few different things in here versus our strings or our uh, brass. It's a perfect octave. Two keys. Do a chord if you want. We also have key here. And we have a mode. Up, down, up, down, up, down, as played. Random, so right now it's on as played. Hold on one key. Or now it's on run, V times two here. Place twice, seven. Play seven times, now if I hit a chord. We could also just do, say, up. Holding one key. Holding a chord. Let's put this on run, so it keeps going for us. Holding down a chord. Change the speed here. Up, down. You can even go to random. Holding on a chord in that case. Let's go to five keys. All right. A lot of stuff you can do in here. Again, a little bit different, basically the same. You can probably figure this out once you know the strings, but we'll go over it here. You have repetition there if you want. And that's all the articulations that we have loaded here. Of course, come in here and load other things that you want. Put that there. Now in this case, if I just press the key, it stops playing. Hold it down, get the full thing, okay? So in the brass, we were able to just, you know, press that key once. It would go through the uh, whole thing. But all this stuff here is basically the same, all right?
ensemble, you already know what this is, right? And of course we can see the key splits down here as well. Then effects, already know this, EQ, here's a reverb, already know about that, and the compression in the filter. So that's our Woodwinds Essentials Ensemble. Then we'll look at a, a single instrument. Go for our clarinets. And this will already be familiar. You already saw this stuff. Arpeggio. Put on key. Play a chord. Or hold on one note. Change the count. Change the mode. Play a chord in this case. Go to rip. That's just one note. It's a chord. Go to accent on the first. Maybe even three times. Odd. Just repeats that. Playing a chord there, okay? Have velocity since here, already know about that too. And basically the same stuff in here, okay? And the last one is our woodwind solo. We have the quintet here. Come to the ensemble down here. We can again see our key splits, do the same stuff in here, turn things on or off, adjust the levels, and of course panning, all that good stuff. And effects, same stuff in here as well. Back to the articulations. Down here. The bass winds, bassoons, clarinets and the solo flutes. Same stuff here with our attack, release, tightness, and vibrato. And of course, remember to automate this stuff for even more realism. Head to our articulations page. Again, you already know what all this stuff is. All right, same stuff. Set that up however you want. Again, switch your articulations quickly right there as well. So this is our solo clarinets. Again, we can do arpeggios if you want. Let's go for a minor seventh. Just holding down one key. holding down two keys. Let me put this on minor. All that good stuff that we've already seen here. So there's repeat, key, trill. So hold on the key. To get it to play that whole crescendo in this case. Of course we have our repetition on those, but we already know about all that stuff. We have this tuning drift here for the natural drift of the tuning. Turn that off if you want, but you probably want that on. Repetition, I already know about all this here. Hits it three times in that case. So that is our quintet. 
same stuff here that we've already already looked at. Then we can look at just a solo instrument, which those were the solo instruments, but they were all together. If you want just the oboes, for example, I have a larger range here. And all the same stuff we already know, legato, the response, solo or duet, arpeggios. And all the same stuff we've already seen here. Down to up. Right, staccato. And same stuff here, okay? Don't wanna go through it again because we've already seen it. Same stuff with our articulations up here. Add in whatever you want, set up your triggers for your switches here on your keyboard. And then of course the effects page same stuff, not going to go over it again. So now you should know everything about our symphony essentials, strings, our brass, and our woodwinds. Again, remember to modulate things, either through automation or while you're playing that in. All of those controls work well to add a little more realism whenever you modulate them just a bit. It doesn't have to be crazy, but you know, just a bit. Of course, we can have multiple instantiations of different instruments here within one instantiation of contact, then just come up here and of course route those properly. And in that case, you of course would want to use separate MIDI tracks instead of trying to program all of that in one, one instrument track, because of course that's not going to work as hopefully you should know, but that's getting more into the operation of uh, Pro Tools specifically, as long as we're talking about just the strings, the brass and the woodwinds. Again, there is a percussion element out there that you can get separately, but all of those you can see here, all five of those come to about 13.7 gigs on your hard drive. So right around 14 gigs. So that is everything you need to know. The definitive guide on Symphony Essentials for Native Instruments. Contact.